I wanted to talk about how Neo Tantra attracts the narcissist. For the seven or eight years that I practiced as a sacred intimate, I didn't understand that I was actually practicing or embedding my codependency from my childhood trauma um, into my work very, very deeply. It was through that that um, I healed a lot of my childhood trauma, namely my, my wounds with the masculine. I got to see um, the best side, the God side, the divine masculine side of regular, otherwise, um, sex work clients. <laughs> I turn them into gods. It requires a proactive, collaborative relationship immediately. Like eye gazing with someone is a collaboration, right? Someone lets you do that, it's an agreement. And I tell my clients that it's a rare thing that I get to engage in with them for myself as well. The narcissist who has $300, $500 can come in to a Tantra Goddess session and get endless supply. Which is also, you know, the why, why, um, why men seek out sex workers in general. But I think more than the average escort, um, a tantra goddess would be um, full of unconditional positive regard because that's part of, I think, what most Western neo tantra practitioners see as what a goddess. They're not embodying Kali. I feel like I was embodying Kali the most when I was like a bitchy, angry, borderline personality disorder, <laughs> um, Eileen Wernos crazy-ish escort um, who had unhealed trauma just oozing out of me. Um, so if you look at the videos before this series that I'm just making after taking a full break, um, it's me just understanding what CPTSD is. And then over the last year, I'm like integrating that with my dog. And then I'm also acknowledging that I have borderline traits and trying to heal those at the same time with my dog. Um, so part of the healing process has awakening, has been awakening to the types of clients that I've continuously attracted. The Tantra goddess inevitably attracts the vulnerable narcissist because the vulnerable narcissist is like, oh, um, wants, you know, knows what the problem is and just needs to be reassured. Um, and it takes some time, I think, you know, before you actually understand all the different tricks um, that are played. Um, being overly giving is part of um, what can easily happen to beginner practitioners who are life coaches, who are any kind of um, intimacy coaching, relationship coaching. You know, I think that if you don't have a solid mentor um, and you haven't dealt with your personal codependency, then a trap that I kept getting into was giving them too much of my time, like endless amounts of my time and definitely fawning as a result of feeling like I needed to do that to keep them happy. The vulnerable narcissists are often making themselves to be the victim. They um, want someone to puff them up. Um, they don't wanna do work, you know? Like, so what is characteristic of a vulnerable narcissist is like, um, and what they don't know about sacred intimacy and Tantra coaching, it's like um, you collectively, collaboratively do the work. Um, so they have exercises that they have to practice. And I mean, I think that's the discrepancy between doing escorting. The escorts roll their eyes and they do the work for the client if they can't do it. Or they pretend that um, something is happening that's not. They spare their feelings, they keep their real feelings, they're professional fawns, right? So um, the truth is not, um, is it, it's like, it feels like the truth will not make you money. <laughs> the truth will not make you money as an escort. So um, you, you omit 
spit the truth as much as possible, I think, to yourself, even after a while. So I got out of that practice um, when I started to um, become more involved with Tantra and spirituality and releasing my personal narcissism. Um, because that is what I needed to save my life, honestly, to become more compassionate to myself. Um, that I deserve better and that I could do better. And that's how I, um, I personally, not just this life coach who coached me into being a Tantra goddess from being a late night escort, I believe that I did that transition as well with the help of Kuan Yin the Oracle Kuan Yin embodying me as well. I'm going to draw a Kuan Yin card. It is a full moon. I wonder... The threshold, that's funny because that was the one I was looking at beforehand and I picked it again. The threshold is my card for this evening. Let's, let's read and interpret that. Shall we? At the threshold you stand, before you lies a way of being that is beyond fear. It is a sacred passing through a karmic veil into a new life of empowerment, peace, spiritual service to humanity, and joy in your own soul. Congratulations, you are embarking on a phase of deepest soul liberation into freedom of love that triumphs over fear. It has been quite a journey. Many, many lifetimes and much inner work has been required for you to be able to perceive the light of the divine, even underneath the destiny of fear. You are fast approaching the karmic threshold where you can shift from fear-based to love-based embodiment. I am going to stop there because that um, gives you an idea of what embodying the goddess is like. That joy of feeling like... You're exploding in your own body. Your body's no longer enough. I can dance with all of the horizon as a goddess. And then I feel like um, I became a priestess in the last two years. I've lived here in Eva Beach for two years. And most of that time I was consciously celibate. Part of it I was homeless. Um, I acquired a fur family. I've gained a ton of wisdom, a ton of healing, a ton of wisdom. 